Welcome back, it's Ari from EnterMedSchool.com. Today we are going to have our lesson 17. We are going to talk about the mitochondria and give a general introduction to respiration. This lesson is super, super, super important for the IMAT exam and I'm going to give you a lot of points you have to memorize and to know for the IMAT exam. So make sure to follow everything I say. So, first of all, during the fat state, when we have enough glucose and we ate enough in order to provide enough glucose to all of our cells, we make a vast majority of energy from glucose. Glucose enters the cell using a protein called GLUT protein. There are many different GLUT proteins for different kinds of cell, but for the IMT exam you shouldn't memorize the different kind of GLUT protein. Just know that glucose passed through the membrane because it's very polar and very large molecule and it has to use a protein, a channel, a carrier protein, in order to pass and to get inside the cell. When we have glucose inside our cell, it is possible that the glucose will go into different passages. But in order to create energy using cell respiration, in cellular respiration, we will first of all use the metabolic pathway called glycolysis. Glycolysis, as the name suggests, is the lysis, the breakdown of glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. Glucose is a six carbon molecule and pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. The process of glycolysis is more complex than what I am going to describe in this video, but we will talk about all the metabolic pathway I'm going to talk about in this lesson in future lessons. The pyruvates are correctly in the cytosol of the cell, will go to the mitochondria will go to the mitochondria, know that the mitochondria is the place when the vast majority of ATP, ATP is being created in the cells. The outer membrane of the mitochondria, which is of course a lipid bilayer, is permeable to small molecules due to specific channels proteins it has on top of it. The inner membrane of the mitochondria is not permeable for small molecules at all. And these two facts are very important to remember about the mitochondria. The permeability of the outer of the inner membrane for the IMAT exam. The inner membrane of the mitochondria has many foldings, as you can see in order to create a larger surface area for the cell respiration to occur in a lot of places. It increases the surface area and for this reason we, have, we can have many different proteins on top of it which allows to create ATP. The foldings, a single one, is called a crista. And in plural, crista is cristae. It increases the surface area of the inner membrane. The place that you can find between the outer and inner membrane is called the intermembrane space. And the place you can find inside the mitochondria, inside the inner membrane, is called the matrix. So, pyruvate enters the mitochondria and in a process, a protein called pyruvate dihydrogenase complex, which we will abbreviate as PDC 
we create a two carbon molecule called acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA, which is now in the matrix, is a very important building block and a metabolite to a cycle called the Krebs. Krebs cycle. While we are not going to talk about specifically the Krebs cycle, you should remember that the Krebs cycle allows us to charge NAD and FAD in order to create NADH and FAD. H2. The charge of these molecules gives the molecules electrons which they can take to the proteins on the surface of the inner membrane and to load them on top of the proteins. These molecules are called electron carriers for this exact reason. They are able to carry the electrons to an area called the electron transport chain, which is a sequence of different proteins that you can find on top of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. If we will zoom in on the electron transport chain, we will be able to see a sequence of different proteins that allows the electron transported to. The electrons jump, quote unquote, from one to the other protein until they reach the last one. When they jump, from one protein to another, they release energy. This energy is being used to pump against the gradient many, many, many protons to the inner membrane space. When we have plenty of protons in the inner membrane space, we have and create a chemical gradient. Because the protons are charged, positively charged, we also create an electrical gradient. These two gradients combined are called electrochemical gradient. The electrochemical gradient is being used in order to provide energy to a very important protein, which is called ATP synthase. In the next part of the inner membrane, you can find it. It works like a motor in some sense. The protons, which are plenty in the inner membrane space, intermembrane space, can pass through the ATP synthase because as you remember, the inner membrane isn't permeable, so the protons can go through the membrane itself. They have to go through a specific protein. When they go through ATP synthase, they create enough energy in order to spin it around. When ATP synthase spins around, it creates enough energy in order to take ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate, which is like ATP without the phosphate that was released in order to provide energy to different things, it can take ADP and inorganic phosphate 
And because it has enough energy from the cycles he does, it can combine them back to ATP. So the electrochemical gradient of the protons allows the movement of the protons through the ATP synthase, therefore charging it and therefore allowing, allowing enough energy in order to create ATP from ADP and phosphate. Another important thing to remember about the electron transport chain is that the last out of the four houses that the electrons jumps to, the last one holds oxygen. It holds oxygen because oxygen is very, very electronegative. It, electronegativity is a measure of the tendency of an atom to attract and bond pair of electrons. And because we have electrons going through the proteins, the last one will be oxygen because oxygen attracts the electrons towards him and on the way from the first, second and third houses we can use the energy of the electrons to provide enough energy in order to pump the protons, the protons to the other side. When the electrons and the protons combine with the oxygen, water is released. In order to provide a constant supply of oxygen to the last house of the electron transport chain, we have to keep breath and to provide oxygen to our cells. Without oxygen, we will not be able to make enough energy and therefore eventually we will die. So to sum up this entire introduction to cellular respiration, glucose enters the cell. Through glycolysis, we make two molecules of pyruvate. Pyruvate goes inside the mitochondria and through a complex of proteins called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, we create acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA goes through the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle creates NADH and FADH2, which are electron carriers. The electrons, using the electron carriers, go through the electron transport chain and are being used, their potential energy are being, is being used in order to pump proteins from one side to the other side of the cellular membranes, from the matrix to the intermembrane. The protons create electrochemical gradient, which is also a change in pH, because protons create a change in pH, and also an electroelectric gradient. The electrochemical gradient is being used in order to provide energy and to spin ATP synthase. When ATP synthase spins, it can create enough energy in order to combine ADP and phosphate to create again ATP. ATP is the major supply of the energy of the cell. It might be very confusing for the first time, but we are going to dive in in the next lesson and to talk about specific parts of the metabolic pathway of glucose metabolism and energy and respiration in general. I will see you in the next video.